After almost one year of time, the PUBG Mobile Global Championship is now back here on the 30th of November, where 40 teams from around the world will fight, 40 of our best teams, I should say, will fight for that chance at that $6 million in prize pool. We've had tens of thousands of teams participating all season long. To have it all boiled down into this event is one of the most exciting moments, if not the most exciting moments of the year for myself, who is Jason Kapp. I'm joined by Blank here to break down our group <laughs> draw coming up to figure out where our teams in our East Conference will be playing and in what group. So Blank, man, I'm, I'm so excited to see how this one's going to break down. There's so many damn good teams in East. I don't feel like anyone has an easy time, no matter what group you're in. Yeah, it's a scary lobby coming from East. I mean, SEA over here, we've even had Mena and South Asia come into the mix who have had some very good standouts so far. I'm looking forward to seeing Deadeye guys play, uh, really making us over in that scene. But we do have an incredibly stacked lobby here oh, in yeah. East. I'm excited to see how the draw happens. But first, we've got some special things to say, Jace. Yeah, we have a special announcement, actually, for all of you at home watching the Game Awards, which are the most valuable and highly recognized awards in the gaming industry have selected PUBG Mobile Global Championship 2020 as the best esports event of the year. And keep in mind, this is the only mobile esports event to be nominated in this category. And we have to give all of you at home such a big shout out for your unending support. And if you guys liked the event last year, make sure to stick around and check out 2021 because it's going to be even bigger and better. But make sure you guys go vote for PMGC 2020 at thegameawards.com and we can hopefully make this the best esports event of the year overall. Now, Blank, are you ready to get into how this is going to work? And obviously our teams are going to be participating off the bat. Bigatron, how could you not talk about Bigatron when you're talking about East? Uh, you just can't not talk about Bigatron. I mean, they've been such a long-standing team, had incredible success over the ages. Yes, they've had a bit of a reforming process here uh, where they're changing the ranks up a little bit. And I think this is going to be a fantastic playground, have a little bit of a mess about during this region in PMGC. Obviously messing about in the best way, creating a, a big scene within the PMGC. And I think that, you know, this could be a return to form for them. I think they've had a lot of times to fix out any issues they might have. Additionally, though, FaZe Clan are coming into the mix. Um, they've been really, really putting performance over in SAA, coming out on top during the league stage with 411 points, even off the back of having only a very, very small 72 point uh, Super Weekend on their first week, which they really made up for in their last two Super Weekends. So incredible stuff. I'm really excited to see these two teams playing with Jason. Yeah, I mean, it's my boy Cor Corpi from Power Triple Eight KPS last season. I I'm really excited to see him back in the action. And he said to me last year that he really wanted to meet me, but unfortunately, we, we couldn't say hi to each other. Maybe this year <sighs> that can happen if they can get into the finals. Remember, it's nine teams coming from the East Conference and six teams from the West will be participating. But also, I'm kind of surprised here, Blink. You did mention Reject from Japan. Like, Bluebees last year made such a splash in the PUBG Mobile scene. And you know they've been just getting better and better and better this entire year long. I think the Honest Hand is an exciting region for me. I think they've had a, a lot of popularity injected over into PUBG Mobile, a lot of support going on in that region um, with the Pro League that's, that's going on over there now too. So I think Reject could be a very, very strong team that's had a lot more time to develop their team play, right? So we have so many teams here coming into it with a lot more preparation, a lot more backing. So PMGC, like you said, is going to be even bigger, better, not better, it's going to be gooder uh, than before, honestly. So I'm real, real excited. And there's also the last thing uh, we want to mention, the, the two PEL slots coming through. There's still Season 4 happening at the moment for PEL, so we don't know who's going to qualify through. Technically, you could be a team who really doesn't have any points at all and still qualify into PMGC if you yeah. take first place, where it's 40 points in total. But right now, you got Nova in first place. Um, you have four Angry Men on four points. So Nova has 32. Four Angry Men has four points, or three or four points. For our returning league champions to so not possible. make it, oh, it's definitely possible. For, for, for your men, though, to not qualify after doing so well in the league stage would, would make me so sad, but also I think it's a testament to how damn good China is. Yeah. Getting straight into our group draw format now, we will have our teams drawn into five groups in the following order. A1, B1, C1, D1, E1, and then so on and so on. So we'll be adding each team in their respective group. So, obviously you can see down there, Group A, A1, A2, A3, and A4, and we'll be going through these systematically from left to right in group order. So very exciting stuff, Jason, and we do have a very, very special person that will be drawing uh, these groups. We do first have to get into a little bit more format of the actual tournament. Yeah, I, I'm really curious to see how like these teams are going to play in these groups. Obviously, like we, we had a discussion about this before we started. Does it really matter what group you're in? 
But if you're if you're in a group with like the three Chinese teams in Megatron, I don't yeah. think anyone wants to be in that group because you're just gonna have such yeah. a tough time, right? So I think it does help a little bit, and obviously the top 16 teams overall from the league stage will get into the finals, and we actually take a look at the format of the tournament so you guys get an idea of how it does work. It's just really reminiscent of last year and throughout the PMPL. So you have two days of league play on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and then you have three days of Super Weekend. And as you can see here, Blank, top 16 teams from those three Super Weekends, or the points only matter in that part of the event, get through into the league finals. Yeah, I mean, we are very, very excited to see this one go down. Again, those Super Weekends are extremely important now. Not getting into one could really hamper your chances going forward. Those top 16 will be comprised of six teams from the West Conference and nine teams from our East with one special invite being reserved, one lucky team going into the League Finals where we have six matches a day to decide this over a short amount of time. So very, very exciting stuff. And if you want to be the best, you got to be part of that League Finals. You say if you're one of the lucky, if you're that lucky team who gets invited, or maybe unlucky because you're going against the best 15 <laughs> teams in the world, not just from West, not just from East. It's going to be tough for any team to, to excel and perform well there. But really curious to see who it'll be when we do get to that point. But I think it's it's time to actually head into our draw. And as you mentioned before, uh, well, before we get to the draw, I should mention the prize pool because that is one of the biggest and most exciting things about the event. It's Six big. million dollars. <laughs> That's five times bigger than what we had last year at 1.2 million. It is a huge number there. Uh, we kind of just wish Kolaris was here to make his huge number noise. Sadly, it's not, so I will instead. Because it is so, so big. And $6 million to play for. Any team would be happy to be here in the PMGC. All right, Blake, without further ado, I think it's time to hop into our actual draw here. As we do have Rosa No, the PUBG Mobile Global Esports Manager, to do our picks for us in this Eastern Conference. And the first pick will be in Group A. I'm excited to see actually who it's going to be here, Blake. And let's see, Rose is going to open it up. And TJB, we got Tong Jiabao coming in from China to represent the region. And to be honest, Blank, China is such a strong force in PUBG Mobile. Oh yeah, China overall, a very, very difficult region to contend with. So many teams from this region have done so well during the past PMGCs. So another scary team to add to the mix. Next pull coming right up on your screen right now will be PL1 slot. I tease you okay. there, guys. I tease you there. It was just the PL one slot yet to be decided, Jason. Yeah, PL one slot. I've heard of this team before. No, it's yeah, obviously yeah, like the number team. one <laughs> team for points for PEL. Season four is still currently going on as we speak, so we don't know where the teams are going to stand. But excited to see again. At least we have two of the Chinese teams already separated. As we get into our first pick from Gru C, we have D Xavier. Now this team extremely strong, and Blake, if I'm not mistaken, they they played actually pretty recently. They did, yeah, they played in the World Invitational coming third place. Honestly, this is a team that has a lot of potential and I'm really happy to see that they have made it here to the PMGC and I can continue to see them use that potential to its greatest. BTR, our next pick from coming through right now. We talked about how, you know, they've been having some difficulties, but right now, this is the place to perform and it's Bigatron Aliens heading to Group D. Oh yeah, I, I can't wait to see how Yuhai has been able to do within the team if they're able to really unleash his power within this <laughs> roster. Moved into Group E, the first pick. We got Team Secrets. They qualified through PMGC points, but you know what? That wasn't enough for them. They went on to go win the PMPL Southeast Asia Tournament as well. So they got an extra 30,000, 31,000 bucks in their pocket, really proving how strong they are. And Mad Toy, I mean, it's Mad Toy. He's good. It's Mad Toy. He's been here for uh, pretty much all the major tournaments, and he's remaining a mainstay now here on Team Secret with Eye Shots, Fredo, uh, you know, they've got a really, really good team jumper in there too as uh, one of the biggest fraggers around. Next slot will be going to DE here. So Deadeye guys coming through from South Asia, doing extremely well. Uh, with a very good backing of their fans as well, Jason. Yeah, Nepal, that region, the, the fans are so passionate. Every time Imperium ever tweets or posts about it, you know, everyone's all over him. They love the region, they love their teams, and it's great to have a, another Nepal team. As we're going to see our next team come through, and it's going to be the Infinity. So they also came in, if I'm not mistaken, through Thailand through the PMGC points. So they're the likes of them and Base Clan with two Thai teams. Yeah, PMPL Thailand here for the Infinity. It will be our next on our list. Next team coming out of the fishbowl, the mystic fishbowl of the group draws. The Rico Infinity team with one of the coolest names. With the eight being the infinity, of course. I know that's very simple, but it really pleases my simple mind. And you know, this is not a simple team, though. They're complex. They're very, very good. Rico Infinity team, once again, making it to one of the big leagues here in PMGC. And again, we're excited to see them perform here on the main stage. STE, our next team, dropping in here, Jason. 
Yeah, Stalwart Esports coming in from Mongolia, able to beat out Zeus. And they even have the MVP of the PMPL Mina and South Asia Championship with action on the team. So a very, very uh, capable team. I'm really curious to see how they can do, though, against this East Conference who has just, it's, it's just stacked. It is stacked. Speaking of stacked, we've got DRS coming in. <laughs> the real soldiers. These guys are extremely good, and they're constantly a nuisance for a lot of the teams in the PMGC lobbies with extremely good uh, team fighting. Saw them last year, and they'll continue to do well here. So already Group A with Tong Jia Bao and Deadeye guys. Group B with our yet-to-be-termined Chinese team and BTR in Group D. So we've got a nice little split here of the teams that we said were like the big dogs so far, which is nice to see. So it's been fair so far from Rosa No. And PEL2, the other team. Oh, what a great name. What a great name. Oh, yeah. Team. I mean, right now you got Nova looking to eye up this position potentially, currently sitting first over in the PEL points. But four Angry Men, I think you only have like three or four points total. But you get 40 points if you can win that. So they could still qualify with great to have the, the returning league champions join us once again. And then, of course, MSC coming through. MS Chonburi as well, coming in from the Southeast Asia Championship. Love to see this team, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, they've got an amazing logo too, but MS Chonburi, yeah, they've they done pawns. fantastic. They got pawns, they got pawns. From Mega from Conqueror. Mega Conqueror, Mega Conqueror, all the way back, way, way back when. Damwon Gaming, for our next slot, going over to Group C, a very, very good Korean team uh, coming through into the mix. Uh, and to be honest with you, I think we've been missing that Korean powerhouse. I think Damwon Gaming really do have it this time around. Yeah, I mean, the organization alone, you know, they have a lot of faith in you since it's such a prestigious org. We're going to move on now to our third pick from Group T and BC Swell coming in from Japan from the Rivals Cup of Korea versus Japan. And they qualified Blink by, do you know how many points? Just that one point. One point, man. One point to the end of PMGC. One point to sit at have to ho or to have to sit at home and watch it. Great to see them come through. Genesis Dogma next on our list. You know, you might not realize from the lettering, but here you can see them quite clearly. Genesis Dogma coming to the mix. Their final day of uh, the finals was extremely good. You know, day one, day two, day three, 20, 14, and eight kills respectively. So Genesis Dogma, there was no letting up towards the end of that tournament. So hopefully they can bring that bulldozer momentum through into PMGC2. So groups almost stacked up and ready to yep. go. Not too many left to be pulled. Here we go. Our first I'm pick from Group A. Our last pick from Group A. Nigma Galaxy, actually. They qualified by almost 500 points more than the second place team in the Arabia Sands for PMGC. Fantastic out of them. And uh, Hikshi, I mean, Lord Hamodi, you're going to recognize so many of these names from before as well. I mean, they're household names as well. So it's going to have a, a very fun time here at PMGC. Four rivals next on our screen coming through. The SEA teams, they love those red logos. And this is one hell of a red logo. Uh, very sharing Ghana, so you know that I'm I'm a big respecter for it. But four rivals coming in straight away from SEA. Uh, I mean, SEA is always a, a team to be contending with. CS also coming through. Cryptics on our screen. Uh, coming for a Group C, our fourth pick. Only one left to go now, Jason. Got to give him a shout out though. Coming from Morocco, we don't really see too many teams from that from that region, especially a team with all Moroccans. So I'm really excited to see if they can put themselves in the map like Zeus did last year with Mongolia. So we move into our last pick for Group D and Reject from Japan. But some boys from X Bluebees here, and and we've been <laughs> saying this so many times. Like Japan, you know they've been just getting better and better in this year that they've had. No one hated the Bluebees. Everybody loved the Bluebees. And honestly, Reject, with all that performance coming through from Japan, they're going to do well. Next pick will be FaZe Clan. Absolutely smashing it in the overall league play. Not quite making the same performance in the finals, but even having that first bad Super Weekend, they made up for it in the last two. So FaZe Clan are definitely a big one to look out for. And now we have our groups all stacked up. Group A looking Pretty stack there with Tong Jabao, the PEL2 team coming through. Nigma Galaxy, Deadeye guys. So maybe a group to be looking out for, Jason. As well as Group E looking pretty strong as well. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm even looking towards uh, BC or BC Swell and of course Reject, like two teams from Japan. I, I think for them, because I, I think most people will see them as a quote unquote weaker region, but I think it's nice for them to have like a team that they know quite uh, quite well from playing with them in Japan alone so to be able to participate with them every single match the problem is they're gonna be with Bigatron every single match as well we yeah. know how strong they're gonna be but to be honest I mean I don't know if you have any thoughts about is there a group of death in your eyes in my eyes every team is so damn good that really any team can be the group of death yeah any team is a group of death in this case I mean if you're swell and you're also reject you know, maybe 
cheering Gambate to each other during those matches, especially with BTR <laughs> being in your lobby. Uh, but don't give up, guys. I'm sure it will go well. I'm with Japan. You know, I'm with them all the way. But yeah, every single group here, they're pretty even across the board. I do think Group E is pretty difficult. Um, DRS is really going to have to have a big step up, which I know is in them. With this new and improved logo, they can fend off the likes of Team Secret and Face Clan. I'm ready to see it, Jason. Well, the upside is you only have to be stronger than four other teams in these lobbies right now because the top 16 teams will advance into the Super Weekend. But from there, obviously, it gets more difficult. Blink, nine teams, as we mentioned before, get out of this East Conference and six teams from the West with one slot still to be given out to a certain team. I, I You just know the teams we're going to get from this are <laughs> going to be so formidable that I, I feel like even though West is getting better, <laughs> East still dominates in my eyes. Yeah, West is getting better, and I think, yes, East is currently at the, the top of the hill at the moment, but, you know, maybe there is time to dethrone that King of the Hill. But you have to find out later on when we go watch the matches on the 30th of November, Jason. And I know when I get a Jason, ah, I know it's going to be a good tournament. Yeah, you guys better put that in your calendar because this is going to be the highlight event of the year, the culmination of this entire year of esports with $6 million on the line. Every team fighting for that chance to get the lion's share but only time will tell which team will come out on top. Make sure you're with us on November 30th to find out.